Hey there, sixth graders. And in this video today, we are going to go through and talk about what it is that you're doing in class today, as well as work on some density notes and do some examples of density so that we can try to get our heads around this last property of matter that we're learning for this unit. So let's first talk about the order. We're going to do some virtual notes here in a moment, and I'll tell you where you're going to write these down in a second. When you're done with the notes, the next thing will be is on the back of that page of the notes, there is a um, chart that is a vocabulary chart for all the different properties of matter that we've learned about this week and last. And you're going to go through and write in definitions. And I'll explain those directions after the notes. And then if you still have time, and there's still some time left in class, you can either work on the homework section of the weighing in article, or there will be in the post on Google Classroom, a link to a practice Kahoot where you're working on some of the information we've covered over the last week and a half as we are about halfway done with this unit. So let's get into the notes here. Either the substitute will pass out the sheet or over on my desk is a sheet looks like this. Finding the density of an object. You're going to need this sheet if you want to pause the video because you need to go get it or a pencil. Go ahead and pause the video and then come on back. All right, I'm going to shrink so that there's room and I'll probably have to move myself around here a little bit as we go through this. But let's go through and start. And I want to just kind of give you a little bit of warning as I'm sure as you were looking at the video when you started the video and you saw the length of the video, you're like, oh my gosh, why is this video so long this time? It's because this is a little bit more than just notes. We're going to go through and we're going to talk about some examples on here too. And you'll write some stuff down that is just more than notes on this document that, that I gave you or that, I'm sorry, that the substitute teacher gave you. So just kind of keep that in mind. I understand it's a little bit longer, but I'm hoping that as we go through this, it'll be interesting for you to hold your attention as we go through this. This is going to be the main activity for the class today. So that's why this video is so long. So I know you guys can do it. All right, just kind of make sure that you're focused in and you have your earbuds in and you're listening and you're following along as we go through and we do this today, all right? All right, so let's start. Density. Let's go with the definition. Density is the measure of the amount of matter in a given space. You're writing in the words matter and space. The reason we do density last is because density is the relationship, the ratio between the mass of an object, which we've already learned about, and the volume of the object, something else we already learned about. So in other words, it's a relationship or a ratio between how heavy is this object compared to how big it is. And so if we're talking about a ratio, we're talking about more math. Yes, I know you're super happy. Ms. Urbanski is cheering down the hallway. All right, so it's the measure of the amount of matter in a given space. We've done density already. We've done it with minerals. So this is a little bit of review. We've actually used the formula because we calculated the density of some of the minerals during that unit. So this is not brand new information for you. So let's just get right into it here. Here's an image. It's on your paper as well. If we could see the particles of an object, it's always going to kind of tell us about the density of that object. So the space is how big it is, right? That's the volume. Those have the same, those two cubes have the same volume. They're the same exact size. Matter, the amount of matter in an object is its mass. So how much stuff is in that space? And if you look at the cube over to the left side, the cube on the left has more matter, more stuff in that space than the one on the right. And so the one on the left has a greater density, a higher density. The one on the left, left has less density, a lower density. And it's again, it's because of the amount of stuff that is in the object. Okay, so how compact is it? How spread out is it? Those would be ways to describe density. The more compact it is, would be more like the thing over on the left. There's more stuff in that small space. The more spread out, like over there on the left. Okay, so think about like a balloon, right? That has matter in it, but it's spread out. The air is spread out inside of that balloon. 
All right, so let's dive into some examples here. All right, so sometimes in everyday life, we talk about density of a forest or of trees. Tree density is important. It's important for our environment. Okay, so the picture over on the left side over there is more dense in terms of its tree, uh, in, in terms of the trees compared to the one on the right. That's a beautiful golf course there. I do not golf. Looks like it's beautiful. Looks like it's a difficult course, but there's not as many trees over there on the right, right? And so there is less density of trees on the right. There is more density of trees on the left. Pretty simple to see. Object three. Ooh, as the weather gets pretty miserable outside, it's good to think about the swimming pool, right? So over on the left, you have a not crowded swimming pool and the one on the right, very crowded. It is less dense with the number of people over on the left side, more dense over on the right side. Again, this is easy just like object two, what I just showed you with the trees because we can see the stuff, right? Usually we can't see the stuff. The stuff that we're talking about is matter, is the atoms inside of an object. These are easy because we literally can see, well, how much stuff is in that area, which is in that space. That's gonna help us with the density. All right, here's another one. This is actually a density population map. And so this is always really important to people that are concerned about living conditions, house, housing prices, and uh, the amount of food that is needed in certain areas based off of how many people are living in that space. And so the darker the colors, the more people it is. So of course, New York, which is a very populated city here, is a very dark blue color because of all the people that are crammed into that smaller space, right? So it's a more densely populated city compared to when you get out here out west to some of these farm and rural uh, states where out in the country there, there is less people per the area. So there's less density in terms of the population. Again, easy to see because we can literally look at the people and we can look at the space and we can tell, oh yeah, that has a lot of density or it has little density. Much more difficult when we're just looking at an object and we don't get to see the particles. So let's talk about that next. Two objects here. On the left is a bowling ball. Yes, there are two bowling balls, but let's just pretend there's one. Couldn't really find a picture of just one. I don't know why, but whatever. So think of it as a bowling ball over here on the left. On the right is just a volleyball, beach volleyball. All right, so let's go through and on your paper there, you'll see underneath the two boxes, the two cubes, it says object five and that's the slide we're on. So grab your pencil here and take a look. First thing it says is for you to make a prediction. Prediction. Which has more density? All right, so go ahead and write on your paper, and I'm going to not talk for two seconds, and go ahead and write which one, the bowling ball or the volleyball, do you think has more density? Okay, if you need more time to think about it, pause your video. Otherwise, let's go to the next question. The next question is compare the volume of the two objects. So if you're comparing the volume of a bowling ball and the volleyball, your choices are pretty simple. Either one of them is bigger than the other or they're the same. Because remember, volume is size. How much space does it take up? So go ahead and write down which one you either think is bigger or write down that they're the same size, same volume. Next, and again, pause it if you need more time. The next question is, we'll compare the mass of the two objects. Now, you don't have these in front of you. So I'm gonna go with your life experience here that you understand that one of those objects has more mass. Which object has more mass? All right, pause if you need more time. Let me get rid of this guy here. Next. Let me move me. I'm in the way. All right, next. The blank has more density than the blank. So your choices here are with the two objects. You're trying to determine which one has more density than the other. So it's either the bowling ball has more density than the volleyball, or the volleyball has more density 
the bowling. Again, pause the video if you need a little bit more time. All right, so let's go back and let's just look at these. I'm not really worried about what your prediction is. I'll take a look at it later, but keep it in mind as you go through these. When we talk about the volume of the two objects, here's the answer here. They're the same. They take up the same space. Their size is the same, right? If they are different, it's not by much. By looking at the two pictures, it looks like they're basically the same size. So we're going with the volume is the same. What about the mass? Well, hopefully you've experienced it before that a volleyball has way less mass than a bowling ball. So the bowling ball has more mass. Think about the games that you play with these two objects. I don't think you would want to try to sit there and spike a bowling ball. Probably would bust your hand and break your hand. All right, so what does that mean then for the density? Well, if that's the case, if they have the same volume, the same space, but one has more mass, that means there's more stuff in the space. So this example is almost just like the picture at the beginning or at the top of your page with the two cubes. If we could look inside this, we would see there's much more stuff inside the bowling ball compared to the volleyball. In the volleyball, it's spread out more. It's just air. The volleyball is solid, it's not hollow, and so it's way heavier because there's a lot more matter in that space. So it has more density. Now, that's super easy because they're the same size. So whichever one is heavier has more density. Not difficult at all. But what if they're not the same size? This is the next one. Put myself right smack in the middle. Same bowling ball over to the left here. But now you have a hot air balloon. Never been in a hot air balloon. Looks kind of fun, to be honest with you, to see that small basket all the way up there in the air. I probably would be terrified. But here are our two objects, a bowling ball versus a hot air balloon floating up in the sky. So... Let's go through kind of the same stuff here. First thing, make a prediction of which one has more density. Okay, if you need another second to write it down, go ahead and pause the video. And then let's go through the other questions, just like before. Compare the volume of the two objects. So again, volume is size, how big it is, how much space it takes up is it's the definition, this, the amount of space an object takes up. So one of those objects has more volume than the other. One of them is bigger, one of them takes up more space. I really hope you can figure this one out from the picture. All right, next, one of these two objects is heavier than the other. So which one is heavier, the bowling ball or the hot air balloon? Think about it, this also should be an easy question to answer. Pause the video if you need more time. Same question here. The blank has more density than the blank. So, does the bowling ball have more density or does that than the hot air balloon? Or does the hot air balloon have more density than the bowling ball? Pause the video if you need more time to write. All right, let's go through it. The volume, which one is bigger? Gosh, I really hope you were able to figure out that the air balloon, hot air balloon, has way more volume. It's huge. In fact, that thing probably couldn't even fit in a bowling alley. The volume is way bigger. Okay, so pause the video and change your answer if you need to, if you got it wrong. It's okay, but get it right on there now. Compare the mass. All right, now if you really think about this, this should be an easy question too. Think about what a hot air balloon carries. I talked about it when the picture first came up there. A human. Humans weigh more than a bowling ball, okay? Even my five-year-old weighs more than a bowling ball. Air balloon also has more mass. Way more massive, okay? than a bowling ball. Can you imagine trying to roll a hot air balloon 
across a field or something? Can you imagine just trying to lift a hot air balloon with your own muscles? You can't do it, no matter how tough you think you are. So the hot air balloon has more mass and it has more volume. So that kind of means this last one should also be an easy one. Hmm? The bowling ball has more density than the air balloon. Uh-oh, teacher error, right? I made a mistake. No, I didn't. And if you're questioning that and you're confused, I get it. Now, for us to really understand how this works, we got to get into the math a little bit. And we're going to do that, and we're going to come back to this in a moment. Hopefully, your wheels are already turning on the inside, though, and you're figuring this out. So let's keep going on your paper. The next one is a think. I would like you to pause the video and take a minute to, on your paper, think of an object that is basically the opposite of the hot air balloon. So in other words, this object's gonna have a really small volume. So the size is small, but it's gonna have a large mass. It's gonna be heavy. Small size, but a really heavy mass. Pause the video, take a minute, see if you can think of an object that you are familiar with or that you've seen or that you know from experience is small but has a large mass. Go ahead, pause the video and fill that out on your paper. All right, I'm curious to see what some of your examples are as you try to figure that out for that think part. Let's move on to the next section of the sheet. The next section of the, sh the sheet says density formula and there's a big open box. Okay, because you're going to write in the formula there. Oops, sorry. There we go. All right, there's your formula. Go ahead, write that in the box. Density equals mass over volume. Yes, more math in science, but again, you you are always allowed to use a calculator. Again. This isn't that difficult because we're talking about just dividing two numbers. For volume, we were just multiplying three numbers. This, we are just dividing two numbers. Not super hard, and you're always allowed to use a calculator. So mass over volume just means mass divided by volume. So if I was using a calculator, I put the mass number in first, divided by the volume number second. Mass divided by volume means the mass number goes first, divided by the volume number. And that determines the density. So we don't measure density. We measure mass, we measure volume, and then we divide them. Because when you go back to what the definition of density is, it's the amount of matter in a given space. The amount of matter, mass. In a given space, the volume. So it's that relationship, like I said, or the ratio between mass and volume, which is why you divide the numbers. That's the math part of it. All right, so let's do an example here underneath the box. Once you have that written in, if you need more time, pause the video. All right, the mass of my example is 24 grams. The volume is 6 cubic centimeters. I already have that for you on there. I have your two spots. You have to set it up first and then answer it. So pause the video, set it up by plugging the numbers into the for formula. So you should have 24 g grams divided by 6 cm3 cubic centimeters and i'm hoping that you can do that in your head in terms of your division pause it do that and then answer it all right you should be done with this setup which looks like that all right and maybe you don't have this mass over volume that's fine and maybe you didn't write it like this like a fraction you maybe use the division sign totally fine. Either way is great. Hopefully you got four for your answer. The density of this object that has 24 grams as its mass, six cubic centimeters, 24 divided by six is four. The unit, this is a confusing one to understand, but easy to remember because you don't have to remember anything. You literally just use the units from mass and you use the units from the cubic centimeters. I'm sorry, the units from the uh, volume, which is cubic centimeters. So you have 
grams over cubic centimeters. So the density is four grams per cubic centimeter. Remember, it's a ratio. So that's where that word per comes in. Four grams per cubic centimeter. So that means every cubic centimeter of space in this object, it would weigh four grams. Its mass would be four grams. All right. It's okay if you're not understanding completely all of this because we're going to keep going through it. But density has to do with mass related to its volume, the ratio between them. And you find that ratio by dividing the two numbers, mass divided by volume. Now, what about that hot air balloon? Oh, come on, move myself here. There we go. All right. Remember, we were just talking about this. How does the bowling ball have more density if the balloon has more volume and more mass? Wouldn't it then have more density? If we were multiplying the numbers, it would, but we're not. We're dividing them. It's the ratio between how much mass per unit volume, right? So how much, how heavy is it compared to how big it is? And so yes, a hot air balloon weighs a whole bunch, but it's also really, really big and takes up a huge space. So let's think about the math. Okay, there's nothing on your paper for this. This is us just going through and talking about it. The bowling ball. Let's just say it has a mass of 10 grams. I'm sorry, 10 kilograms. It has a volume of five cubic centimeters. So mass divided by volume, 10 divided by five. That's easy, two. Two kilograms per cubic centimeter. I just use my mass unit, kg. I use my volume unit, cm3, and I put that slash. That's my unit. All right, that's simple enough. Well, what about this hot air balloon? How would it have less density than that bowling ball? It has more mass. It has more volume. It should have more density. And hopefully you're sitting here and basically yelling at the screen and saying, no, it doesn't, Mr. Ristow. I'm smarter than you think I am. I have already figured this out. Yes, it's really massive. 360 kilograms. That's really heavy. That's like 800 pounds almost. It's really, really heavy. But look at the size of that thing. 56,000 cubic centimeters. And that's actually for a small one. I looked it up. That would be for a hot air balloon that can only hold one person. That's on the smaller side. Even with that, look at those two numbers. When I divide those two numbers, because that's what density is, it's the relationship, the ratio between those two, look at what the answer is. It's not even close to one kilogram per cubic centimeter. It's 0 0.006. Its density is way less. How? It's heavier than the bowling ball, yes, but it's also way bigger than the bowling ball. And so the ratio between how big it is to compared to how much it weighs is actually really small. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Why does a hot air balloon fly up into the sky to begin with? It's because it's less dense than all of the air around it. So that's the answer to it. And that's where density actually is in lots of parts of our lives that we probably don't even think about. And we'll talk more about as this unit goes on. All right? All right. I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm hoping that you guys were entertained as we went through and do it. Turn your paper over. I want you really quick for review to write down here some of the units that we've already done. So I'm just going to do this really quick. I'm not really even going to talk about it. Okay. Go ahead, pause the video. Write those in on that table that are on the back. When you're done, unpause the video. Okay. Lastly. Underneath that table, there is a properties of matter vocabulary chart, and it has all of our very important terms. Matter, mass, weight, volume, density, the things we've been working on this week. So underneath each of those terms, I have in small print where in the stuff in your binder, you can find the definitions. 
for all of those. You need to use those resources. Do not Google them. They're not all, those won't make sense to you. I don't want you to. You are going to use the resources that I have listed there underneath each word to find them. You're going to work and write in those definitions with the remaining time here in class. When you're done with this, you can go back to this, which is this weighing in thing that we did with that guy bringing the gold coins up. And there's this homework section down here. This is going to be homework due next week, probably Tuesday. So this gives you an opportunity to work on it here in class once you're done with the properties of matter vocabulary chart. Some of you are already done with it. So if you are done with it or you finish this and there is still time left in class on the post for today's instructions in Google Classroom, there is a link to a practice Kahoot just to practice that is the last thing I would like you to do if you have time or if over the weekend you want to review on your own and just practice this stuff to see how well you know it. All right. Make sure you are staying on task for the rest of class doing these things. Be flexible with the substitute teacher, making sure that you just follow what they're telling you to do. And I'll see you guys either in the afternoon because I'm back in the afternoon or I will see you back at school on Monday. Thanks. Bye.